And good afternoon, everyone. This is Chris from the Pain and Glory blog, and I'm coming back to you after my first video on Blood and Valor and how to play it using 15 millimeter figures from Battlefront. Um, I wanted to start to break down some of the different nations because in the first book, you've got a lot of different nations that you can play, mostly from the Western Front of World War I, but not all of them. And I wanted to kind of break down what are the different options, because unlike some science fiction or fantasy games, fundamentally everyone in Blood and Valor is a human, right? Is a man who's fighting mostly with rifles and grenades and things like that. So how do each of the nations differ from each other? And what nations do you want to play if you have a particular play style that you generally prefer. So I'm going to start not necessarily with the first alphabetically, but with my personal favorite. And the one that I think is a good starting point, the French. Viva la France, right? You are, you are the men in the honestly kind of strange looking blue uniforms holding down the line against the barbaric Huns, Le Boche, coming at you and you are defending civilization. So why should you play the French. Well, first of all, awesome uniforms. Look at those uniforms. On the far right, you've got the early war uniforms. They're, they're very 19th century, practically Napoleonic with these blue jackets and these bright red pants and the, the kepi hat and this absurdly long rifle with the equally absurdly long bayonet. The Lebel, that picture doesn't do it justice. The Lebel rifle with the Lebel bayonet towered over most French infantry. Um, so if you're going early war, you have these extremely colorful uniforms. And then even if you're going mid to late war, you can see there are reenactors in that photo kind of in the center. You have the, uh, what are referred to as the metropolitan French, metropolitan being a term that describes the French soldiers from, um, from Europe, 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 France, France in the European mainland, um, in their uh, horizon blue uniforms. The idea was that these uniforms would disguise you against the horizon. Uh, did that work? I don't know. I have a feeling after an hour in the trench, it probably wasn't blue anymore. It was mostly muddy. You can also see an example of one of the French colonial troops there in the middle with their khaki uniforms. And that one happens to be a North African um, with that red sash and kind of the yellow piping. So you have a variety of uniform choices. Of course, um, your colonial troops don't necessarily have to be uh, North African or black skinned. There were colonial troops of French descent as well. You also have troops from Asia and of course the famous French Foreign Legion who depending at what year and where they're from, you have a variety of uniform choices. But you generally go with khaki uniforms with those classic white kepi hats. Um, of course, the French are masters of Elan, roughly translates to like uh to like a fighting spirit and we'll talk a little bit more about that how that translates into rules if you're looking to fight with the french in a particular theater you have lots of options of course the french were most well known for their fight on the western front in the actual fields of france and also belgium and luxembourg but also there was french in combat in west africa in the middle east in the balkans they sent soldiers to romania and also italy closer to the end of the war so pretty much anywhere in world war one with maybe the exception of like the eastern front in russia you will find french soldiers if you were looking for them the french as one of the major powers also have a ton of unit variety and as i said before i think they are a great force to learn blood and valor with because of um, their particular national rule which is in fact called elan and what Elan does is it gives not all of the French units, but all French corps and command units, and honestly, most of their support units. It gives them the tough special rule. And what the tough special rule does is whenever you make a rally action, you immediately remove one point of fatigue. And, and then you also make the rally action where you could remove more fatigue. So fatigue is the thing in Blood and Valor that represents your forces being pinned down or suppressed. And so immediately getting rid of fatigue because of this French fighting spirit to charge forward into the face of the enemy is a great thing to get your soldiers moving when they might otherwise be stuck in position because they're under fire. They're not particularly amazing at any one thing, like how the Germans are a bit better at close combat, um, or the Anzac forces can charge from farther away. Elan's more of a generic, uh, kind of multi-purpose, always a little bit useful ability that 
will be used in pretty much every battle. So what else about the French? What kind of units do they have? What kind of variety? They have a ton of variety. They have possibly the most variety, maybe tied with the Germans for kinds of units. So of course they get their standard command options, the lieutenant, the captain, and the major, which all have their French names that I'm not going to try to pronounce. In terms of special characters, they have Lieutenant Colonel Emile Driant. Again, I apologize. Uh, he was a politician. He re-entered the military at the beginning of World War I, uh, and he was famous for leading his men to defend their area during the Battle of Verdun when the Germans were advancing in 1916. He held out long enough that reinforcements could arrive and, and reinforce that area. And when he was withdrawing his uh, roughly 1,200 troops, or that's how many he started out with, um, he was killed during action. And there is still a holiday that celebrates uh, Lieutenant Colonel Driant and his men every year in France. Their other option of a named command character is actually not a Frenchman at all. It's a New Zealander named Lieutenant Colonel James Waddell. Uh, he actually originally fought in the British Army, I, and he later joined the French Foreign Legion and fought for France during World War I. Um, outside of the command options, in terms of core, the French have the core riflemen that every nation gets with optional grenades rifle grenades and light machine guns. Um, those all come in the later war. Grenades also come in the early war. Um, and they can also take inexperienced riflemen as a core, which are a little less expensive, um, but they, uh, they aren't quite as good overall. And I'll go into detail about what makes them not quite as good, but of course they are less expensive. If you're fighting in the early war, as a support choice, you can get cavalry, men uh, riding around on horses with swords and also rifles. Um, you will find out that much, much as the French did, that they are maybe not as good an idea on a World War I battlefield as you think they are. They might have their uses. Those uses are fairly limited. You can also take heavy machine guns, of course, a classic World War I weapon. And then the French are fairly unique, although the Americans have this option too, because they got them from the French, of taking a 37 millimeter infantry support gun. It's essentially a tiny artillery cannon that three men can lug around the field, and it was primarily used to try to take out entrenched enemy heavy machine gun nests, because it is a small explosive round. Well, small in terms of artillery. It's still about an inch and a half across. Uh, the French can also take a sniper, for close combat options, they have lots of choices. They can take uh, French trench raiders, they can take their North African Senegalese troops called the Tiralieurs, and they can also take the Harlem Hellfighters, which are actually U.S. infantry. They are black soldiers who the U.S. did not allow to fight with white American soldiers, and the French said, oh, you have these soldiers that are not using, we would be um, very happy to take them into our um, command structure, and they earned um, fame fighting alongside the French, you can take the Harlem Hellfighters either as just a standard unit, or you can take them as a special unit with Private William Henry Johnson, nicknamed by the Germans the Black Death. Uh, and then finally, you can round that out with some off-table support, an artillery barrage, and also a gas barrage. So the French have tons of options. Now, because they have tons of options, that can also lead to some trouble figuring out, well, what exactly are you going to take? So I wanna break that down for you with kind of the, the costs and the benefits of each unit and also kind of their, um, how much damage they can deal per point. So I'm gonna break this down mathematically. So if you are taking, uh, if you're taking Blood and Valor as a historical game and you just wanna say, hey, in this battle, I took these guys and that's who I'm gonna fight with, that's fantastic, do it. If you wanna go at this in a competitive way, I'm gonna have some numbers for you, and that's great too. Everyone's got their different ways of playing it, and Blood and Valor supports both of those pretty well, I think. So up first, you have your command choices. Now, the way the command works is, uh, you can see they have a variety of points, but your command always comes with one officer and two uh, buddies. You could say they're essentially uh, bodyguards or runners. Um, in terms of the game, they're essentially just there to kind of make sure that your um, commander doesn't get shot immediately. Uh, you have your basic lieutenant at zero points. Their command range is eight inches, and uh, they only give one command point, meaning they can only give out one order to a nearby unit 
uh, per activation. Your captain, 15 points. No longer free, but they do get two command points. Your major goes up to 25 points, and this is where things really start to get different. They get a 12-inch command range, which um, normally Blood and Valor at the smallest size is played on a three-by-three three table. Eight inches is fine to try to order your troops around, and also um, your commanders give a, um, a morale buff. They, they give a minus, which is a bonus in this case, a minus to the resolve score you're trying to hit when you're rolling for uh, resolve tests and rallies. So that 12 inch on the major, if you're playing on a bigger table, like a three by four table, can really reach the far corners of the board. Uh, the major also gets two command points and also gets plus one to tight initiative rolls. So if you bid an identical number as your opponent, it's just a roll off to see who activates first. The major will give you an ever so slight edge on that. Into the special characters, um, Lieutenant Colonel Dragant is 35 points. He's effectively a major, but instead of plus one to tight initiative rolls, he gives plus two. And at the start of the game, he also gives two units nearby him the Furious Assault special rule for the duration of the game. And what Furious Assault does is it allows that unit to charge from instead of four inches away, it can charge from six inches away, which can be very useful um, well, under a lot of circumstances, but can be extra useful under very specific circumstances. No other uh, French units in the game can get Furious Assault except through Lieutenant Colonel Triant. Um, the most expensive commander is Lieutenant Colonel Waddell, the New Zealander. He has 40 points. Um, he is also a major, but with the plus two to tight initiative rolls. And instead of the normal minus one to resolve checks, he actually gives a minus two to resolve checks. And at the start of the game, he gives two units advanced setup, which advanced setup lets units immediately take a run action after setup, but before the first turn of the game. So you can kind of run two of your units up the board a little bit. And because they have run, they're also going to be a little harder to hit until the next time they activate. So he can get a head start on the enemy. Now, moving on to the uh, main units of the French force, I'm going to make an important note about the math that I did. All right, so my calculations are averages, and my averages are based on whatever unit I've selected shooting at an enemy standard rifleman squad, and I've given them a plus three penalty to your unit's shoot score, meaning most units have a shoot score of six. The plus three penalty means you now, instead of needing a six to hit an enemy unit, you need a nine to hit an enemy unit. I've also not modified the enemy shoot save, which usually happens when you're in hard cover, like behind a stone wall or something. Now, why a plus three penalty to your shoot score, meaning a nine to hit? That's a very common penalty I found in my gameplay until you start getting very close to your enemy. Um, so you can get a plus three penalty to your shoot when your enemy is 18 inches away or more, 18 or more, when they're 12 inches uh, or more away, up to 18, and they're in soft cover, or they're running, or they're dug in, or if your target is even between 6 and 12 inches away, but they're in soft cover, and they're running, or they're dug in. So even your targets that are fairly close to you, between 6 and 12 inches, if, if they're in soft cover, and they've also been running or dug in, it's pretty easy to get a plus 3 penalty to your shoot score. Um, I'm also assuming um, the target has no resolve bonus. Um, and for close combat, there's no penalties in that case because, well, you're right up in them in their face and there's, they're not going to be dug in or anything like that. Um, so I've also assumed that you're fighting just a standard enemy rifleman squad with a close combat save of seven. Again, that's a fairly standard close combat save except for some of the elite units. Um, there are, I think, one or two exceptions to these rules, and I will very specifically note them. So let's talk about the baseline, the unit by which all other units are compared, the French Rifleman, your core unit. You need at least two French Rifleman units in any force, although they could be regular French Rifleman or inexperienced French Rifleman. You can have between four and 12 models in this unit. It's four points per model. Those models come with a rifle. You can add grenades, rifle grenades, and light machine guns to your unit for the points that you see listed. However, um, grenades apply to the entire unit, and I'll talk a little bit about how those work. Rifle grenades and light machine guns, those six points and eight points are not just the weapon, but also the model that carries it, and you're limited to one each. Now, here's the math. How does this work out in terms of um, if you have your unit of riflemen shooting at an enemy across the board, 
and you've got that plus three penalty to your shoot score. How efficient are they in terms of the points that you spend? And I found that the rifle deals about 25 wounds per 1,000 points. Now, why did I do it per 1,000 points? Because if I did it per point, it would have been 0 0.025 wounds, and that's hard to say. So I've just made everything per 1,000 points because then we can deal in nice round numbers. Um, if you want to think about it uh, fractionally, it's essentially 25 divided by 1,000. So that's our base, right? Your French riflemen do 25 wounds per 1,000 points. Anything better than that is more efficient. Anything worse than that is less efficient. In close combat, um, because you don't have to deal with all of those uh, range penalties, uh, and also just because close combat's deadlier in this game, um, you have 75 wounds per 1,000 points. So that's going to be our close combat baseline right there. Uh, finally, if you want to add a rifle grenade man, he's going to cost you six points for a model, but unfortunately, he only does 21 wounds per 1,000 points. So he's actually not as efficient as just adding a rifleman. There are some weird quirks in how the rifle grenades work, and I strongly encourage you to pick up the rules to look at how they work um, in general. And so I'm not, the, the rifle grenade can shoot over friendly units. So there's a scenario in which your regular rifles can't shoot anything because there's line of sight issues, and the rifle grenade can, in which case, yes, the rifle grenade's better because you can use it, whereas the regular rifle you can't. But in general, I found the rifle grenade to be a bit of an underwhelming weapon. The light machine gun, on the other hand, is 50 wounds per 1,000 point. So it's twice as efficient as regular riflemen in terms of dealing damage. Uh, the LMG, I would say, is almost an auto-include unless you're really planning on getting this unit stuck into close combat or uh, you just want a big, cheap unit to kind of soak up hits and um, take the fire off of your other units. Finally, coming in at a whopping 192 wounds per 1,000 points, so almost eight times more efficient than just regular buying a regular rifleman, is grenades. Here's the catch. Grenades only have a range of four inches. So it's really efficient if you can get there. It's very likely you might only use grenades once or twice a game, if that. You might never use grenades. So if you can get up there, that's great. If you can't, it would then kind of be a waste of five points. You could buy um, one and a quarter riflemen for five points. I wouldn't put grenades in every unit, only the units you really think are going to get up close. So that is our baseline, especially those two numbers. For rifles, 25 wounds per 1,000 points, and for close combat, 75 wounds per 1,000 points. Now, the next closest comparison is, of course, the French inexperienced riflemen. They are also a core unit. You can take, this will sound familiar, 4 to 12 models per unit. They are only 3 points per model. They come with the rifle. And you can't get all the bells and whistles of a regular rifleman unit, but you can take grenades also for 5 points. Now, what's the downside to French inexperienced riflemen? They have a lower close combat score. So if you were planning on getting your riflemen in close combat, the inexperienced riflemen are maybe not the ones you want to use. They also have a worse shoot save. So they will go down faster if they're being shot at than regular riflemen. Now they make up for that by being cheaper. So is the trade-off worth it? Uh, the final negative is also a regular rifleman give you three initiative points per squad, meaning that uh, those are three points you could bid towards going first each time you bid. Uh, inexperienced riflemen only give you two. So 25% less expensive, but 33% less initiative points if we want to put it in numbers. Math-wise, the inexperienced riflemen, because they shoot just as well as the regular riflemen, they die faster, but they shoot just as well. They actually deal 33 wounds per 1,000 points, so they are more efficient in shooting. And in close combat, even though their close combat score is worse, their points are cheaper, so you could have more of them. They give out ever so slightly 80 wounds per 1,000 points instead of the 75 wounds per 1,000 points. And grenades, of course, 192 wounds, um, just like the regular riflemen, but only within four inches. So French inexperienced riflemen. I've been experimenting with inexperienced units. They definitely can have 
uses, especially as um, some people call it a tar pit, a big unit that can kind of slow people down and, and soak up damage and things like that. So they have their uses. They are not as, um, well, they're not as useless as you might think as an inexperienced unit would be. Now, getting out of the core units, we're going to start moving into the support units, and this is where you're really going to put your variety into your French force. So we have our French cavalry. This is a support, um, and you can only take it in the early war. Of course, if you're playing a friendly game, you can do whatever you want, but if you're trying to be historical, it's early war only. Uh, it's four to 12 models per unit. It's seven points per model. It's almost twice as expensive as a regular rifleman. It comes with a rifle and also a horse. And it comes with a couple special rules. Not only does it have tough, like all or almost all of the French units, it also gets the cavalry rule and the blood curdling charge special rule. Uh, cavalry gives you a free advance move every turn. So every turn, as long as they're not shaken, you can move four inches. Also, they can dismount. So if you really need to get off your horse because some of the penalties that horses give you, like you uh, can't go through barbed wire and such, I, again, I would check out the rules for that. You can dismount and then uh, it'll be easier to move around. Also, when you're on the horse, it's easier for opponents to wound you. The hit chance is the same, but the wound chances is, um, is worse for you. So if you get off your horse, you can kind of counteract that a little bit. French cavalry, unfortunately, efficiency-wise, not very good. They only deal 14 wounds per thousand points for rifle. Um, and then because of that blood curdling charge special rule, they are slightly better at fighting on the round when they charge. It gives them 60 wounds per thousand. And when they're not charging, it's 51 wounds per thousand. Compare that to the base rifleman of 75. French cavalry are just not very efficient because they're so expensive. If you have a very specific use for them, because they are so mobile, and that's their advantage, speed, they could theoretically advance four inches and then run eight inches, 12 inch move, nothing else can move 12 inches in this game, um, then they could be good for that, but they're not efficient points wise for fighting. Moving out of the early war only unit, we come to the quintessential World War I weapon, the heavy machine gun. The heavy machine gun is 20 points. It comes with one gun and three uh, team uh, models, three models that are going to arm the weapon, effectively giving it three hit points. Math-wise, it is 48 wounds per 1,000 points. It is ever so slightly lower than the light machine gun. Now, the light machine gun has to be attached to a regular squad. You can't just have light machine guns wandering around the battlefield. Whereas the heavy machine gun only costs 20 points, the light machine gun you're looking at a minimum of 24 points to get riflemen and a light machine gun out on the table. The heavy machine gun is also not very mobile, but it does have a bonus against cover. So it's better against units in hard cover. And that doesn't quite show up in my math because I didn't look into hard cover. I pretended that essentially everything just had that flat plus three penalty to shooting. Um, so the heavy machine gun can be very useful. I, I wouldn't call it an auto add, but it's definitely pretty solid. And at 48 wounds, it is almost twice as good as the kind of default 25 wounds per thousand points for a regular rifleman. I did not do close combat for a heavy machine gun because quite honestly, if you are in close combat with a heavy machine gun, something is going horribly wrong. That's not what they're for. Uh, the other support weapon for the French, the uh, infantry support gun, or the 37 millimeter cannon, unfortunately, kind of a disappointment. Um, much like the heavy machine gun, it's 20 points. It gives you one gun and three models. They have kind of some wonky rules about shooting. Again, I would pick up the book and look into it. They unfortunately only deal 16 wounds per 1,000 points. They cost the same as the heavy machine gun. They're not nearly as effective as the heavy machine gun. They're not nearly, they're not even as effective as a rifleman. So, I cannot think of a scenario in which you would want to take an infantry support gun from a competitive point of view, um, but if you have thoughts on that, please let me know. Up next, we get to the French sniper. Now, snipers in World War I mostly operated solo, with the exception of the British who implemented sniper teams, a sniper and a spotter. So the French sniper only gets one model, it's eight points. It's very fragile, which is why you generally want to keep it back away from the the main combat lines. It starts with the hidden setup special rule, which allows it to essentially, you put it on the table and the enemy can see it, but they can't shoot it until the sniper shoots or moves. So it's safe early on in the battle until you decide to start using it. Math-wise, 
Uh, this is the one exception where instead of giving a plus three penalty, I gave the sniper a plus two penalty because the sniper ignores all cover, hard and soft. Now, they could still get up to a plus three penalty um, if the target was very far away or if they were running or still dug in, but they would ignore soft and hard cover. And they have 31 wounds per 1,000 points, but that number is slightly deceptive. It's slightly better than a regular rifleman for per point, but because they ignore cover, they also ignore the wounding penalty that hard cover implements, which was not a part of my math. I did not implement hard cover in my math. So if a unit is in hard cover, the sniper is even more efficient than it looks with those numbers. Also, whenever the sniper hits a target, it automatically causes one fatigue. And also the unit still has to roll for fatigue following the normal shoot resolution rules. And so what snipers are actually very good at is not killing enemies, although they can do that a little bit. They're really good at pinning enemies down, which is what you find snipers do in World War I. That's why you don't stick your head above the trench, because the sniper is gonna take it off. And so snipers are really good at pinning people down. I actually think that number of 31 wounds per thousand is not really indicative of how good they are. Again, I wouldn't call them an auto-include, but they definitely are pretty useful and they, have, uh, they are efficient. Finally, we get to the French close combat specialists, of which there are three, and I've combined them all on this list. Now, what makes them different from the regular infantry is A, they're just overall generally tougher. B, they only have four to eight models per unit. You can't have a really big close combat team with 12 models per unit, they're capped at eight. All of these get the close combat specialist rule. The Trench Raiders, the Senegalese, and the Harlem Hellfighters. And what that means is they reroll failed close combat attacks when they're fighting. And they also reroll barbed wire tests. So if you're getting through barbed wire, your close combat specialists, they won't always do it, but they got a much better chance of doing it than regular troops. They're also much more deadly in close combat than your regular troops. Their close combat score is a six instead of a seven lower, uh, I'm sorry, regular rifleman is a six. Um, so it's the same score, but they reroll fails. So that's pretty good. Now, what makes these three different? Well, the trench raiders are six points per model. They come with a rifle and grenades. The Senegalese are six points per model. They come with a rifle and grenades. The Harlem Hellfighters are six point per model with rifle and grenades. The Harlem Hellfighters, however, they have a bit of a unique thing going on. You have to take a minimum of four. And the way the math works out is that the first four Harlem Hellfighters cost 28 points, which is seven points per model. But then every additional Harlem Hellfighter costs six points. So essentially you're paying a four point premium for any Harlem Hellfighter squad. That actually means that the bigger your Harlem Hellfighter squad, the more uh, better model the point ratio you're getting. Now, do you want an eight-man Harlem Hellfighter squad versus a four-man? I don't know. That might depend on your battle plan, but it does get more efficient in that way, and that's why I have a little asterisk down next to their numbers, because those are based on six-man squad. I did all of the math in these based on like a medium-sized six-man squad. How else are they different? The trench raiders are essentially upgraded French infantry. They, in addition to the close combat rule that all of them get, they get the regular French tough rule, meaning that when they rally, they get automatically get rid of one fatigue. The Senegalese, because they are not uh, technically French, they lose the tough rule, but they pick up blood curdling charge, the one that gives them a minus one bonus to their target number when they're charging. So the Senegalese, when they're charging, instead of needing a six close combat to hit, they need a five to hit, and then they also reroll their misses. They can be incredibly deadly on the turn they charge. The Harlem Hellfighters, for their four extra points, they don't have tough, because again, they're not French, they're American. They keep the same blood curdling charge as the Senegalese, but they also get the American rule devil dog, which lets them re-roll all failed resolve tests. I actually think that might be more useful than the tough rule because they re-roll failed resolve tests when they're shot at or when they fight in close combat, but then also a rally action is a resolve check. And so they would reroll failed 
rally actions. That's my interpretation. And so that American rule, which the Harlem Hellfighters have, and also all American troops, which I'll get to in a different video, it kind of makes them a combination of the trench raiders and the Senegalese, where they are really hard to break their fatigue, but they also have that really often awesome charge attack. They are four more points, four points more expensive. Finally, wounds wise, how's it look? The trench raiders, well, you'll notice I didn't list any rifle points here. Um, that is because pretty much universally, they're as good at shooting as a regular rifleman, but because they cost 50% more points, six points per model, or that special case for the Harlem Hellfighters, per model, they're not as good in shooting. You don't want to choose them and then specifically use them as fire support. They're called close combat specialists. You want to put them into close combat. Um, in terms of close combat, however, they are actually at about the baseline as your regular riflemen. You can see the trench raiders give you 75 wounds per 1,000 points. The Senegalese give you 75 wounds per 1,000 points in regular close combat, 84 in a charge, and the Harlem Hellfighters are 67 for regular close combat and 76 for a charge. So I was, when I did this math, I will be honest, I was actually kind of surprised that they were not more deadly when they went into close combat than the regular riflemen. Now they do come with grenades by default, so you can um, use them pretty efficiently within four inches for shooting and then charge in. If you have that ability to do that in one turn, but point for point, I'm not 100% sure if you'd want to take these. Now, they have their other uses. Obviously, the Senegalese are more efficient on their charging turn. And what I usually end up doing with my close combat specialists is they are a massive distraction to the enemy who don't want to be charged with them. So you can use them to scare your enemy and then use your regular riflemen to actually do most of the hard work. That's just a theory. I'm testing it out a little bit more. Final units are not really units. They are the French artillery, which is the artillery bombardment and the gas bombardment. I'm going to do a totally separate video on the different kinds of artillery. Um, artillery is 20 points. Gas bombardment is 15. And in some ways, is actually more effective, but in other ways, it's less effective. So again, I'm going to cover that in another video. The French. I think they can be a really great force to start with in Blood and Valor, both for rule of cool reasons, they look good. They've got good historical backgrounds to them. Lots of locations where you could play with them and a huge amount of unit variety. Up next, I'm going to film another video. Probably I'll do about one of these a week. I'm going to cover the other major Entente power in the West. And that, of course, will be Britain. So I look forward to sharing that with you. And until then, you keep gaming.